So as we start the worship, let us pray to God to have an encounter with Him today by opening our hearts to be able to see the richness of His glory. So let's sing this song, Open the Eyes of My Heart. Sing their songs to you, streets in the field. 
expectations or not the positivity you brought here today could you know be a lot of things after right uh, and that could be a lot of things could be unexpected blessings uh, restored relationships forgiveness of sins and also we could say finding your uh, spiritual bodies or maybe a lifetime partner that's a long shot right but anything could happen and for that we just have to maintain that positive attitude right so uh i'll give you my wife to share today's uh, scripture mm -hmm. um, our scripture for today is first thessalonians 5 18. give thanks in all circumstances for this is god's will for you in christ jesus amen being grateful should not only come in with our circumstances and feelings Although most of us had a hectic week, burn out with work, with our obligations, it is good to boast and count our blessings, big and small. If bad things happen, we can still be thankful to God uh, for God's presence and for the good that He will provide us through all the distress. So this afternoon, brothers and sisters, remember that no matter what circumstances we are in, we can give thanks to God. Because our gratitude is anchored to our relationship with Christ. Okay, so now every uh, what you say is everything that happens to us is not always good, right? And we know that God uses that everything for us to work for our own good, right? So if you ever wondered if uh, things are hasn't transpired yet, or maybe God has not given you what you prayed for don't be discouraged right and because we we know that you know these short mysteries should not let us you know uh prevent us from thanking for all of uh, what we're having right so for today's lineup uh we will have Char uh, dennis and charlotte taking us to the foot of the cross and preaching us for today's snatch that's something to look forward to and closing out our service with we'll Jude with his uh, response and announcement. Okay, so let's prepare ourselves and let's go to God. Heavenly Father, as we go to our service, Lord, we're just so grateful that you gave us this opportunity to be together, Lord, and worship you. And we pray that your spirit be upon us and be with our uh, brothers and sisters. We'll be uh, sharing your word and may this open our hearts and minds to seek you more and 
be with you as always. Okay, we thank you. Uh, let this service be always for your greater glory, Lord. All this we pray to send you as our Lord. Amen. Amen. starting a solid foundation is crucial. Let's take which Philip was an example. The magnificent structure was undertaken with strong emphasis on its foundation, which took, by the way, three long years. Since its opening, it had experienced and will continue to experience harsh weather condition, such as sandstorm, blistering, temperature, torrential rain, and according to the news, the one time 12 hour downpour we experienced a few months ago was compared to a worth of the nation's rain in a year. And yet, the massive skyscraper has withstood them. Credits to its strong foundation. In relation to our faith, it requires a solid and heavily grounded foundation. Otherwise, it won't sustain it has been over two decades since we gave our lives to Jesus. And that, during that decades of journey, we faced several challenging circumstances that has taken toll on the tower of our faith 
and thought that it would crush the uh, Charlotte to, to shame. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. This is the first time we are sharing with you some of our somewhat eventful journey so far. It started in 2009 when we were nose deep in our debt, most of them due to impulsive decisions and lack of spiritual advice. It worsened even more as the years went by as some of my husband's work privileges had been stripped off. As a result, our finances were challenged miserably. At those challenging times, one of our kids almost died because of undetected necrotic appendix and had to undergo an emergency surgical procedure at a very young age. A year later, we made a huge decision where me and my kids had to go back to the Philippines while Dennis stayed as someone has to bring in the bacon. Dennis's dad had succumbed to a dreaded cerebral stroke which he suffered for over five years before he left us 2020. And during the course of treatment, we also had to help with the finances. While that was ongoing, our finances were crumbling, even more due to a food-related investment partnership that we joined with few very close disciples. The challenges that came during the startup of the business had caused unbecoming character revelation, which resulted to two of the partners to disband from us and left the church. At the time of the pandemic, the business went under, and we all decided to sell it. In desperation to dispose it quickly, because our liabilities were inflating by the day, caused further complication. <laughs> It was a complete madness, but I am sure this is nothing compared to others who experienced much worse in life. But they really changed, they changed me. Um, I became unreasonable and got easily excited with my children and my husband. It affected my relationship with them as I began to demonstrate ungodly character. I noticed that my relationship was becoming distant and dismissive. Um, this was pointed out to me and we found ourselves on our knees begging God for deliverance. Um, I knew I was gradually sinking and personally I asked myself, am I in tune with his requirement? Am I really obeying him? Come on, Am I building an, another foundation? Um, am I grounded in his words? Where is God? I have been a good person, as I may say. Um, I pray, I read the Bible, I confess my sins and repent. Um, isn't this what he asked me to do. I asked, why was it so hard for me to obey? Um, it's so hard for me to simply say, whatever you want, Lord, I'll do anything you ask. But my sinful nature continues to resist. Then I started seeing God's movement in response to my questions. He used my husband and my children to snap me out of my crumbling life. My husband's love for Christ shone all throughout our struggles. He reminded me of the foundation that, he, that we as a family have built on and we should together continue with confidence in trusting God to be in complete surrender to him. Since we decided to build our faith on the foundation of Jesus, we realize those, um, that those painful circumstances were needed to make the structure of our faith more resistant to any blow the world would throw at us. 
In the hindsight, during the trying and challenging times of our lives, God graciously placed strong disciples, people, and unexpected resources that aided us. We were never left unattended. If our foundation is not on Jesus, we would have drifted off and may, may have suffered even more. So a good thing Jesus instituted the communion to us when we look at the cross as our foundation. It would always remind us that He suffered, died, and rose for each one of us. It is more than enough as no one can replicate or put the price tag on that. Brothers and sisters, we don't know what you're going through now, but yours may change in just a snap that could put your current spiritual standing at risk. And if you lower your guard and not careful in your watch, the very foundation of your faith may be threatened. But we would like to encourage you that if you choose to build on the underpinning bedrock of Jesus, of Jesus, you are seated on a foundation that will never be destroyed nor shaken. As we break the bread and drink the wine to remember Christ today, Let's look back at our past and remember all the time God's been right by our side. Those times when He shielded us from the numerous and painful trials we didn't understand at that time. This day offers the opportunity to be grateful. No matter how difficult your situation has been or will be, we can lift our hands and our hearts to the Lord and let Him take care of the rest. We should allow the past reality of his suffering on the cross, leading to his death and his resurrection as our continued, unshakable foundation, regardless of the circumstances that impacts our present. The cross should remind us of who he is, who we are in him, and what we will become as we continue on the foundation that was laid over 2,000 years ago from here to eternity. To God be the glory. Amen. Father in heaven, thank you so much for uh, today, for everything that we bow down before you in complete surrender. And thank, we cannot take enough for everything that, and even the opportunity to share those painful and trying times. God, it's liberating. And we are thankful that we have people in their lives and that you continue to, to rest your favor upon us. God, we are grateful for everything. May you be with us and in this communion that we may forever be grateful and remember that we should continue to sit on this foundation. We live up everything to you. We love you so much. All these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Laura, great uh, to be here. Uh, it's really a privilege uh, to share. And uh, I just want to bring, uh, I hate to be the one to bring bad news. You know, uh, if you were born 70s, you are on 50s right now, right? <laughs> we, we, so there's a new group now called the Gen Z. If you're not in the Gen Z, I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> All right, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, I, I want to welcome you all here. You know, my name is Nash. Uh, I'm from Kenya, for those who are visiting. And uh, I'm a third born in a family of five boys. We don't have a sister, you know? You, will, uh, you feel sorry for my mother, yeah? <laughs> but she, she, she tried. And tonight, Please don't call Yinka. There's a football match, England versus Spain. So, don't you dare call him when the time is there. All right, and let's forget this news now. Let me bring another news. Let's go to the word of God, right? All right, so let's pray before we start. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you God for this wonderful time. Now Father, we it's just an honor to be here. You know how difficult uh, this uh, for me as uh, personally. When I was reading this message, I can relate in my character, in whatever I'm doing as a husband, as a brother, and as a, as a as a father to my kids. Please, uh, when, when, as I'm going to share, Father, let us all inside here relate to what we're going to do, and we can repent of it, Father. God, be with us. Be with me as I share. Lift up everything to your name in your son Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You know, brothers and sisters, uh, it is great to be a Christian, right? Uh, and the life of being a Christian, you know, uh, I won't trade it to something else. But remember that the Bible teaches us that you and I have an enemy. That that enemy does not want us to make it. And that's what I want us to talk about today. You know. You know, uh, when I was doing this message, to be honest, brothers and sisters, I, when I was going through it, it was so difficult to me because I saw myself in that message. And there are some things that I wrote there. I was like, wow, this is me speaking to myself. You know, because the character that I have to, in my family, towards my wife, towards my kids, even as a brother here, I could see myself, the flaws that I had. You know, it was so difficult. But you know, this enemy, this is what he wants. He wants you to feel down. He wants to feel you to feel beaten. You know, I was even thinking of, I don't want to share. Because I'm not right in my heart. But that's what the enemy wants. He wants you to give up. You know, this journey that we have, the devil wants you to give up. You know? So I was wondering, what, what if God gives us a chance? And tell you, you know what? I give you an opportunity to go and interview the devil. You know? <laughs> See? That interview will be crazy, right? You know? It will be, it will be, it will be very, it will sound with a lot of lies. What are the things he will say? And what are the things he won't say? As a matter of fact, the Bible says in John 8, 42, to 48, I'll read it, uh, I'll read to 44, I'll read 44. It says, you belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desire. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Notice what Jesus said here. He says when he, when he lies, he's talking about the devil. He says he speaks his native language. Jesus didn't say if he lied. He said when he lies, I can guarantee you that interview is going to be full of lies from the start to the finish. Why? Because he will be speaking his native language. So I started to make a list of things. If I had a chance to interview the devil, what kind of things will, I, will he say? 
But more important, what are the things he won't say? Because he will be speaking his native language. And I came up with five things which I want to share today. And this brings, this brings us to the title of the message today. Five things the devil will never say in an interview. <laughs> five things that the, the devil will never say in an interview. Point number one, everything the Bible says about me is true. <laughs> Satan will never alter those words. The Bible calls him the enemy. He's called the adversary. He's called the accuser. He's called the serpent. And I can promise you that he will never admit as I start that interview. No? And, but the, and he will never say, this Bible, whatever it says, is not true about me. But you and I know that it is really true. He will probably say things like, you can't believe everything you read in the Bible. Especially those uh, pastor and Nash talking about me right now. You know? Look at me. You can't believe the stuff they wrote. Man wrote those things. People put those things inside there. You can't believe it. You can't believe what the Bible says. You know, I mean, we need to put things in you. The Bible is like an internet. You can't believe everything you read in an internet, right? We buy things from Timu. Or uh, where we buy the picture in the uh, chain. Yes. The picture there is very nice. I just bought some things from Timu. And when they came, the t-shirt the is like here. But when it was in the internet, it was so cool. I wanted to have it. I couldn't wait. This is what I'm waiting for. You know, the point is. Satan will never admit that the Bible is true, especially everything that says or talks about him. He will never say that in an interview. He will not corner himself. You know, Satan will never even take an oath because he knows that we will corner him. Amen? Amen. Point number two, Satan will never say God is a good God. Turn with me to Genesis 3. Right from the start in Genesis 3, uh, chapter 3, we are introduced to the devil. You know, here is Eve minding her own business. All of a sudden, he shows up. That is how he works. It's like you and I. We are sitting here minding our own business. You know, we don't go looking for the devil. You know, he will show up. He will find us. He will find you. You know, then Satan shows up. The Bible says he was more crafted than all animal the Lord has made. Let's read together. Genesis 3, 1 to 5. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord made, the Lord God had made. I beg your pardon. He said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the tree in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it, or you will die. You will not suddenly die. This happened to say to the woman. For God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Brothers and sisters, and she fell for it. What was he doing here, basically? He was simply saying, by God saying not to eat from the tree, God was withholding something from her. Satan, God, got Eve to question God's goodness. And she fell for it. And he does it the same thing today. When you start hearing those voices talking to you, saying, you know what? If you're a Christian, how come you're suffering so much? How can that happen to you if God really loves you? He does it all day. And sometimes, unfortunately, we fall for it, right? You know? But he never said God is good. You and I know that God is good. God has been so good, we will spend the rest of our life thanking him 
and praising him for everything he has done for us. Amen. Honestly, the ultimate thing that God did for us was allowing his son to take that place on the cross. And he died for our place. I don't know about you, if that is not good enough, then you've got a problem, brothers and sisters. That was the ultimate goal. Satan gets us to think that God doesn't want our best intention in heart. Like I said, we start looking at things like suffering. You know, we look at our health. We look at our finances. We start asking questions, well, if there is God, if God is so good, look at all this evil in the world. And we forget that there is going to be a day of reckoning. That nobody is going to get away with it. But the truth is, Satan will never say anything good about God. Never. He will never alter anything good about God from his lips. That's what you and I need to be doing each and every day. Amen? Amen. We need to always praise God. That's why we need to constantly remember as we go through this life, every single day, that God is good. And one of the things we need to be grateful is, even this day, just sitting here, there's some people who can never meet. You know? I had you, when, before we started the service, you were wishing somebody happy birthday. It was so loud I couldn't hear. That is something very grateful for that person. You know, we are looking forward, me, uh, next month will be my birthday, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for gifts right now. <laughs> but to be honest, brothers and sisters, that's a good day. I look forward, will I even reach there? I don't know, you know? But just waking up each and every day, we that's need right. to be thankful of. Amen. We have a lot to be thankful of. Every single day you wake up in Dubai. Dubai is so stressful. We need to be grateful of. You know, they, you have that uh, colleague who's gossiping you to take your job. <laughs> you don't know. You know, that's how this life is. Unfortunately, we can never control that. Yeah. Yeah. There have to be praise in your lips each and every day. Because the truth is, some people went to bed last night and they didn't wake up. Here in Dubai, you know, and some of them even we know them. Some of them even they are close to us, unfortunately. So we have a lot to be grateful of. God is good, brothers and sisters. But Satan will never say God is good. <clears throat> Point number three. Satan will never say in an interview, I am the prince of darkness. He will never admit it. Look at 2 Corinthians 11. It's talking about false apostles. And in the passage, Paul is defending his ministry. You know? 2 Corinthians 11, 13 to 15. It reads, For such men are false apostles, deceitful workers, masquerading as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. It is not surprising then if this servant also masquerades as servants of righteousness. Their end will be what their action deserve. You know, in our culture, or I'd say the rest of the world, when we see the image of the devil, you know, they point him out to be this ugly, reddish looking individual. Now, brothers and sisters, first of all, I don't know where they got that thing from. Because from the scripture, it's saying that he masquerades, he's disguising himself. You know, there's a picture of him with a horn, he's got a tail, and he's got a fork. Eh? What is that? Where in the world did they get that from? You know, the Bible says he masquerades as an angel of light. He looks normal. He is in disguise. You know, uh, there is this uh, festival people celebrate. Uh, Halloween. 
You know, in Halloween, everybody is in a costume. <laughs> That's not the real them, right? They put on a costume. They have the. They want to be uh, heroes of something. Some of them have crazy costumes. You know. What I want to tell you is, he's always wearing a costume. For Satan, every day is Halloween. <laughs> because he will never show you his true color. He masquerades as an angel of light. So he will never admit he is the reason for all this trouble that you and I are in. He is the prince of darkness. The Bible tells us. And the most of the world is under his influence, unfortunately. Most people in the world are following him, not God. You know, we say we are not following the devil. Oh, yes, we are. We are all sinners and fall short for the glory of God. Romans 2, 23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And until we decide to make Jesus our Lord, to make Jesus an important thing, the only thing in our life, to repent our sin and get baptized for the forgiveness of our sins, that's how we come to the kingdom of light. Acts 2, 38. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sin, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. How, that's how the Bible teaches us. And if you have doubt, go and check it out by yourself. You know, study the Bible if you are really visiting us. You will see the light. I'm not trying to sell you some, some bunch of goods here, brothers and sisters. Satan is, though, you know. He's always supposed to know Christianity is just a bunch of rules. We have had this. You're not going to have fun if you become a Christian. You know? Look at all these guys. Look at these guys with money and uh, big cars. Look at them. They're just, are they serving God? And they are happy. Join them. Brothers and sisters, if you only knew how miserable those people are. Remember, there's a saying that says, all that glitters is not gold. If only you knew what was going on behind closed doors, you will never even desire to love any lifestyle outside. Mm. Amen. But you see, he will never admit that he is the prince of darkness. Mm. He is the master of disguise. The truth is, Satan will never admit or show his true colors. You and I know that by description, disguises are meant to fool people. He has a lot of people doing this bidding of disguising. They wear their, their suits. They carry the Bible just like everybody else. They will use the Bible. They will say a bunch of nice things. But not, never call people to live their life according to the Bible. So brothers and sisters, I'm asking you in the afternoon, even as we are seated here, are we being fooled by the devil? How long are you going to allow that to continue? When are we going to, going to fight back and say enough is enough? You know? There's a saying that says, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. How many times has Satan fooled you? Or us? When are we going to say enough is enough? I'm done. You see, the only way we are going to get out from being full is by getting into the Word of God. That's the only way. When you and I get into Scripture, we will even start seeing things that people do in the name of God that is not in the Scriptures. And I say to you this afternoon, let's stop being fooled. When we get into the Bible, the Bible will lead you into the light and away from the darkness. Amen? Point number four. Satan will never say there are consequences, consequences for you obeying me. Genesis chapter 3. Eve ate the fruit, 
gave some to Adam, then they realized they were naked. You know? These guys are hiding from God. You know, brothers and sisters, we, somebody like me, when we have kids, you know, the, when they were kids, and you will tell them not to eat, uh, let's say, sugar or uh, cookies, you will find them, they go and eat it, and it will be all over their mouth. <laughs> when you ask them, did you eat it? No, no, no. <laughs> but it's all over their mouth, it's all written there. You know, when a kid has disobeyed the parents, it's very bad. You know, and when you see this, you feel like, sorry to them. Why did they disobey you? And you already told them not to do that. You know, I wonder how God felt when he told Eve and Adam and Eve not to do that. But they ended up going to do whatever they were told not to do. You know? I think... Even us, sometimes when we sin against God, we are like those little kids. We deny things, but it's all overwritten in our face. When, when I read Genesis 3, the three, that's what I think about. All of a sudden, they were hiding, and they were hiding from God. God is saying, I can see you. But the thing was, obvious, they disobeyed God. God had told them not to eat from the tree, but, but there were consequences to them listening to the devil. Let's read together in Genesis 3.16. To the woman, he said, I will greatly increase your pain, you know, in childbearing. With pain, you will give birth to children. Amen. Your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. Amen. Now I was looking at this quote here. I'm very sure it is by grace I will tell you. A lot of sisters here will, will go and visit Eve and ask them what really happened. You know, for those who are mothers here, you know what I'm talking about. You know, this, this consequence, this teaching here is very hard. And that's not all he said. Genesis 3, 17 to 19. To Adam he said, because you listen to your wife, and ate from the tree about which I commanded you. You must not eat of it. Cast the ground because of you. Through painful toil you will eat of it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow you will eat your food until you return to the ground. Since from it you were taken. For thus you are, and to thus you will return. You know, I believe Adam was just minding his own business. Then he was introduced to uh, this fruit, and he, he took it. And we can all be sometimes into this kind of situation. You know, we are deceived by somebody. Oh, the church is very boring, so look at those guys. Let's leave. Let's do something. You do something bad. You don't know there's consequences later on. There are consequences when we disobey God. But Satan never told them that at the beginning of Genesis 3. When, uh, when he tempted them. You see, Satan will never tell you the consequences of you obeying him. He will never tell you the consequences of you and I disobeying God. Brothers and sisters, there are always consequences. I think sometimes we confuse the fact that, yes, we have been forgiven from the fact that even when we did something wrong, we are still going to bear out our consequences. Mm -hmm. You know, it is like the saying, as you make your bed, so will you lie in it. You reap what you sow. Yes, you have been forgiven, but you are going to pay a price for disobeying God. You will always bring pay a price, brothers and sisters. We will always pay. So there's always a choice, brothers and sisters. Are you going to obey God or are you going to listen to Satan? We have a choice every single time, every single day. You see, Satan will always know that judgment day is coming. You, there's a reference for that, Revelation 12. He knows that the Bible says, 
His time is short. He wants you and I to believe that we can get away with everything. That you can be a husband and not love your wife the way you're supposed to. And you think you can get away with it. You can be a wife, very nice to disciples, but when we get home, you're a lion. You're a wolf. You know? You can be a sister and you're messed or you're messing around with sites which you're not supposed to go and messing around with people in the world and you think you will get away from it or a brother you can be a brother and you're misleading sisters and you think you will get away with it no you won't you can last on things in the world and think that we are going to get away with it nobody will get away with it because God sees everything. God knows everything. There are consequences for obeying the devil. If we are not obeying God, we are obeying the devil by default. No, I am very sure we don't want to look at it that way, but trust me, it's not rocket science. Obey God and flee the devil. Last point. Satan will never say, I am out to ruin your life. Satan will never say, I love you. Why? Because that will be a lie. Instead, he says, follow me, you are going to have a great life. Love yourself. Love money. Last all you want. If something makes you feel good, do it. Everybody is a sinner. Go ahead and enjoy yourself. And all these things will ruin your life. You know, we all know that if we do this, those things will ruin our life. You know, we can see it. We have seen it from other people. In our families. In our extended family. We have seen it with people we walk around. We have seen it with people we live with. Satan has created a lot of havoc, brothers and sisters. People are hurting outside here. That's why we reach out to people to comfort them. That's why we sit down and study the Bible with people. Because Satan is ruining everybody. And the question is, what are we doing? What are we going to do about it? You know, as Christians, God has allowed us to know him so that you and I we can break that cycle. You know, that's one of the reasons God saved us, you and me, so that we can break that cycle of just doing the same thing over and over again. Yes, in your family history, there have been maybe somebody who's a drunkard, a prostitute, a thief, a murderer, a humanizer, you know, but you can change that, brothers. That's why you were reached out. We should never live like that forever. We know the scripture that says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Joshua 24. Have an attitude of, I'm going to raise my kid the way God says for me to. Change that thing. You know, that's why we are here, brothers and sisters, to complete that cycle. But don't make mistake about it. Satan is out there to ruin your life. And he will continue to do it. But my Bible tells me, you will resist him and he will flee from you. Finally, Matthew 7, 13 to 14. It says, enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life. And only few find it. Brothers and sisters, that's not me talking. That's Jesus. The road to heaven is not huge. That everyone is getting on. Most of the humanity, they are on, on, on this huge road. Most of the, the people out there. They're just there by default. It says narrow is the road that leads to life. And only a few will find it. Which means 
You're going to be looking for it. You're not just going to bump into it, brothers and sisters. It's not an accident. You've got to be seeking it. You've got to be go after it. And remember, the devil cannot be trusted. We've got to trust God always. When, remember when Jesus was talking to his apostles in the book of John 14, he says, trust in God, trust also in me. And he goes on and says, in my father's house, there are many rooms. And he says, I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And I will come back so that you can be with me. You know, when you read about this, you feel like with all the things that are going around, material things in this world, anyone who wants it, he can have it. You know, that's, they are meaningless. You trust in God and you're going to inherit a kingdom that never fails. Remember, brothers and sisters, God is the one that we should trust. Don't trust the devil. There's no good in him. You know, when he speaks, he lies. He speaks his native language. He will never tell the truth. Satan is out there to ruin us, to ruin our life. All you need to do is look around and see the number of people that he has ruined their life. Even people that you, very strong disciples, they are now opposing the Bible. People that are close to you, Satan is creeping in and ruining their life. And they think it is fine. Ten years down the line, then they will understand. They were being deceived. They were not having fun. They were not enjoying it. You know? The devil cannot be trusted, brothers and sisters. Remember, he is out there to ruin your life. And one of the things we need to do as Christians is to fight back by using the scriptures. Brothers and sisters, the devil is real, but the Bible promises that if we resist him, he will flee from us. Don't trust the devil. He, he has been lying. He will keep lying, and he will always lie, because he's out there to ruin your life. To God be the glory. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, what an amazing service we've had today. First of all, I want to thank uh, Tita Arlene and Tito Gary for an amazing welcome, and uh, Tita Dennis and Charlotte for bringing us to the full of the cross. And of course, to Brother Nash for that amazing sermon. Like, let's give him a warm round of applause, everyone. Uh, today is such a blessing, because uh, this sermon, uh, this entire service, from uh, welcome to the communion to the sermon, it was so cohesive in my perspective because the welcome reminded us that life will come with uh, trials and tribulations, but there will also be good times. So we have both good and bad. And then the communion reminded us that amidst the bad, that if we have a good faith in God, we can go through life. And you know, it's only through our faith with God that we can build that. Uh, great foundation but throughout that uh ser that uh, the service today we've been reminded in the sermon that although we're building that relationship with god there's that enemy prowling around there's that enemy that's trying to take you down it's there when you're trying to build yourself with god trying to build that relationship that that enemy will hit you in your most vulnerable point so that was a fresh day because most of the time we focus on our relationship with God, we forget the enemy. But who is that enemy? It's Satan. So I want to thank you, Nash, for that amazing perspective of reminding us to be mindful of the enemy, to be mindful that he is out there to ruin our lives. He is out there trying to say that, you know, this world has so much to offer and that's all that we need. But in reality, it's only God. Amen. So, again, thank you for that amazing uh, sermon, Brother Nash. And to everyone who's still here, thank you once again, especially as well to the ministry of uh, the worship ministry, thank you. And to the people in, behind the technical, we're also very grateful for you guys. Um, and yeah, we're just such a blessing to be here today, to be reminded of all these things. And, you know, it just uh, puts a fire in my heart again to be more careful, to be more mindful. 
Thank you, Brother Nash. And for the announcement, okay, so we'll be back here at the Oval Hall next week on July 21st at 1 p.m. And if you're visiting us, uh, please uh, uh, talk to the person who invited you and uh, ask them about their midweek worship service and uh, in that specific area. And thank you for coming today. And the Kids Kingdom, parents, please collect your kids as soon as this worship finishes. And let's remember to thank the KKC teachers. And the uh, monthly contributions can be handed down to your respective finance representative or your Bible talk leaders. Then, Mighty Warriors Group starts in September. It's a focus group to get trained. It will be in the third week every month after church in room 307 boys at 3.30. Uh, please let your Bible talk leader know if you if you like to be part of it before the end of the month. And special contributions will be collected at the month of October for Afghanistan, Sri Lanka, and Sudan. And Bible talk leaders meeting will be on July 21st at 3:30 in room 307 here in the Voice Building. And lastly, uh, I just want to say thank you for everyone who found, who came here today, gave their time. I know everybody's busy. But you took that time to be here today, and God bless you. So let's go to God in prayer to close our worship service. Um, Almighty Father God, we are truly blessed and truly grateful to be gathered here today. We are so blessed to have been reminded, Father, that throughout uh, our lives that we will face trials and tribulations. But because we have this amazing grounded faith in you, that uh, we can face all these trials. But help us, Father, to be reminded that while we build our relationship with you, that we must be mindful and be careful with the enemy that's prowling around, Father. Help us to have our faith grounded in you because we know by ourselves we won't be able to fight against the enemy. But because we have you, you will be able to face all challenges, even the enemy that is Satan, Father. We just want to lift you up. We just want to say thank you. We love you, Father. And we pray for each and every individual person here who came here, who gave their time to you. Uh, may you bless their hearts, Father. We thank you, Lord. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I hope uh, for the last song, uh, we would like to remind everyone, you know, sometimes when we look at the stories in the Bible, we think that, how can I do this? I'm not able to do that. But Jesus himself said, said in the book of John that we can do his work and we can do even greater things. Amen? So let's be reminded and let me encourage you to sing this song. Praise God. Mm -hmm.
what we have done.